guys. It's me, Smell McGee, and the MRI stress test. They should emphasize stress. <laughs> that was one of the worst tests I've had in my whole life. As you can tell, I'm feeling great. I'm about to go run a marathon, climb a couple flights of stairs. Um, I will give you guys the full story when I have the breathing capability to. See, things got a bit more interesting today. I still kind of, I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm so tired. I will give you all the full report when I get home. Emergency room number two of today. 2021 has been a really, really good year for me, guys. As you know, it's me, Smell Mickey, and I thought I would give you the update. <laughs> give you the update on what happened yesterday. I wonder sometimes why I record myself looking so lovely, but hopefully one day things are a lot better health-wise than they are now. And I'll be able to look back at this, see the reality of it, and remember I can get through whatever thing I'm facing. So yesterday, as I posted before, was my um, heart MRI slash chemical stress test. And if you're wondering what a chemical stress test is, it's basically one of the worst tests I've had in my life. So they put you in the MRI machine, they strap you down, which who doesn't love being strapped down and then shoved into a very tight tube? But anyway, then they do the MRI and that's not the bad part. The worst part is the stress test. So, sorry, I'm still a little struggling with short of breath, shortness of breath from yesterday. Um, the stress test. The worst part of it is so... A stress test, as you know, is seeing how your heart does with physical activity, but they can't exactly put you on a treadmill while you are in a um, MRI machine. And as you know, I have had a regular stress test in the past and I utterly failed it because most 90 year olds have better endurance than I do. <laughs> so they give you this medication that makes your heart race and it's horrible horrible. I am one of the world's biggest optimists and it is horrible. So they inject you with this medication. They warn you that your chest is going to feel heavy. You're going to feel like you're running a pill, but all of a sudden they give it to you and you cannot breathe. It feels like an elephant is sitting on your chest. You can't expand your lungs all the way. Your heart is just pounding and there's this pressure in your heart. And then the machine constantly tells you to hold your breath. During the normal MRI, I kept on telling me to hold my breath. And then when they give me this medication that I can't breathe, that they're trying to get me to talk and I don't even, like, I can't even form words. They put you in the MRI. The machine tells you to hold your breath. And it's, like, for six freaking years. Like, you can't even breathe. And it's asking you to hold your breath for a minute and a half. <laughs> and every time I hold my breath, I cough with my lungs. So I was coughing like the whole MRI, which really hurt. And then the tech was really nice. And he told me that like, um, if I feel like I'm going to cough, just start breathing. So I was worried I screwed up the whole test. And then they give you, they take you out of the machine and then they give you this medication that relaxes your heart rate and stuff. It kind of started working, but not really. Like, breathing got a little easier, and it usually, like, returns people back to normal, and I didn't go back to normal. So I'm in the machine trying to catch my breath, you know, and then you're saying to yourself, like, because you want to freak out because you can't breathe. You're shoved into this small, confined space, and you can't breathe, and you're having to tell yourself, you were told this is happening. You're fine. You're fine. You're going to be fine. They're going to give you the antidote. It's going to work. Everything is going to be fine. Be calm. Like, I was thinking of the beaches in Hawaii listening to Taylor Swift on my headphones, everything that relaxes me. And then they give me the antidote and things didn't get better. They got like a teeny bit better, but not really. And then they got out of the machine and I was just dizzy. Like so dizzy. Like I actually sat up and the world was just, that's how it felt. It was horrendous. So they um, 
were trying to get me back to normal, acting like everything was normal, but seeming a little bit worried. Like, they tried to get me to stand up and everything. I was just so dizzy and so lightheaded, I couldn't stand up. I couldn't catch my breath, but my oxygen was staying okay because I usually only drop when, you know, like doing physical activity and like I couldn't really move much, you know? So it was horrible, but they uh, let me go home. They had cardiology come and the very most basic echocardiogram you could do, just basically hooking me up to, it wasn't even an echo. It was, yeah, it was like a very minimal EKG. They hooked me up to that and could just see that I was in sinus tech. So they said I was safe to go home and I could barely walk. So they got my mom. She's able to help me get dressed, get out the door. And they said, if things get worse, go to the emergency room. So I started driving home. I still, as you saw in that first video, could not catch my breath. And then things got worse. <laughs> All of a sudden, I, that pain, it's just that pressure continued and I still felt like my lungs couldn't expand all the way and then there was just the sharp pain in my chest. Like a fat man standing in a stiletto, like on your chest, like right here, a fat man standing in a stiletto and the pain would just stab through my heart. It hurt. Oh man, it hurt. So we ended up going to the emergency room when we were halfway from home. And that hospital was amazing. I got the coolest nurse there. Like, he took the time to talk with me like I was a person. You know how rare that is to find in healthcare? Like, someone who just sits and talks with you and explains everything to you and just makes it seem like such a normal thing when you're really scared and you're really stressed. And they commented on how calm I seemed when I just was running on autopilot, you know? Because I just didn't, I didn't know what to expect. I mean, before I got in the machine and the IV started, I had this like little voice whisper to me that this is going to be really bad, but I'm going to be here with you. So I knew God was by my side and I think that's what was keeping me calm. But that hospital was awesome. They did an echocardiogram and saw that my QT was a little bit prolonged, but not bad. They did a chest x-ray to make sure that no pneumothorax or something was going on. And they uh, just ended up giving me some Toradol because with a connective tissue disease, my body is really good at inflammation. So they wondered if it was an inflammatory response. The Toradol worked and I was able to actually breathe again because I, I know I'm still a little short of breath, but I was just not able to breathe at all. Like I just couldn't expand my lungs. And since that helped, they felt like it was okay to send me home. And my mom went and got the car and that awesome nurse was pushing me back. And he was so funny. He's like, you need to drink fluids. I want you drinking so many fluids. I'm like, does a giant awesome lemonade from Taco Bell count? And he's like, no, that's not fluids. I was busted up laughing. I'm like, oh, come on, man. You know, and he's like, honestly, you have been through so much though. I will go grab you a Dr. Pepper if you want it right now. And I just looked at him and smiled. I'm like, did my nurse literally just use the quality of life card on me? <laughs> and he just busted up laughing. Like, it was awesome. He was so funny. And we were talking about how I'm interested in medical social work. And he was telling me a little bit about that. And we ended up being in the same faith. So we talked a little bit about that. And that was really cool. And then my mom came and got me. We got some food. And my poor mom, after the day, we got our food and we both got giant nachos from Taco Bell because I have a problem. And nachos are like my main food group. <laughs> and she just spilled her poor nachos everywhere. <laughs> like nothing went right yesterday at all. It was just, oh my heck. But then we're getting home again and the pain starts in my chest. Again, right around the time the Toradol would be wearing off. And then I can't breathe and it hurts. And I'm just like, what do I do? And we were just like both at our wits end. We went to an Instacare who sent me to the emergency room. And that emergency room was awesome, but they had the worst wheelchairs I've ever seen. They literally looked like adult strollers and they had like really uncomfy plastic bottoms. And if they're made by the Striker company, which I think makes strollers, it's horrible. <laughs> anyway, the nurses were super awesome and that facility was super awesome. 
and looking into the rec they had the records from the hospital I went to like an app to a, can't talk they had the records from the hospital I went to like two hours earlier and through the scans and through the blood work they're just able to see that I was having an inflammatory response because of my connective tissue disease to the stress test because well it stressed my body out and what does my body do when it's stressed it swells <laughs> So they gave me a Tordal shot, a full bag of fluids, so I technically kept my promise of drinking. <laughs> well, not drinking, drinking via vein. And then they sent me home with some more uh, anti-inflammatories, which have been the biggest help. I was finally able to get home and I was still so dizzy. I had to get help in the house, like it's feeling awful. I was finally able to go to bed and today I woke up and I can walk by myself. Uh, the dizziness has gotten better throughout the day. I got the COVID shot, which was amazing. I'm still having chest pain and as you can see, some difficulty breathing. But the NSAIDs are keeping that under control. But my muscles have been acting up again and lifting my legs is getting a little harder. So I think this uh, reaction triggered just like a giant flare which I'm really hoping doesn't get a lot worse Actually, because I am getting a scope and colonoscopy on Wednesday and I have some symptoms that make it so I can't push it back. But my biggest fear is to have extra inflammation during that time. I'm having so much inflammation going on right now. I talked with, I get a talk with them because they actually schedule general anesthesia now to be there and to supervise with my history. But the whole thing is just a giant mess, and I'm really honestly terrified for it. Uh, yesterday, it was emotionally a lot. <laughs> like, so much. But it amazed me how, I tell you, like, God sends good people to remind me life is still good. And I kept on being sent a lot of really good people my way. And I was able to find moments where I genuinely laughed and everything was going horrible. And it was just one of those days where I kind of gratefully didn't die. <laughs> But you did see God's hand there. And that kind of feels like how my life is going lately. Like everything is so hard. <laughs> it's been really, really hard. But I know God's hand is there. And I know he is active in my life. So you can't really ask for more than that. Because when you're in his hands, you are in perfect hands, you know? So I'm, I'm a bit of a mess, as you can tell. And I'm just, I don't know what's next. But... God does, and that's what matters. Uh, let me know if you like the live updates or these kind of updates better. I Throwing these together is a little harder when I don't feel good, but I just kind of wanted to show the process of what those days were like. Uh, thank you all for the love and support. If you have any questions, please comment below. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe. Just the more you interact with my content, the more of it you will see. And your guys' support is everything right now. So thank you for it. Stay strong, trust God, and as always, smile on. Here comes the sun.